Hi, everybody, and welcome to Top Women in Grocery, a podcast focused on the trends, topics, and interests that move women forward in the grocery retail industry. I'm Lynn Petrex, Senior Editor at Progressive Grocer, and I'm excited to host my first Top Women in Grocery podcast. Uh, in case you missed our first one, it was on a couple weeks ago with our intrepid editor, Gina Acosta, talking to our intrepid managing editor, uh, Bridget Goldschmidt, about the Top Women in Grocery program. So if you haven't uh, seen that yet, check it out. Uh, and today I'm talking with Rosita Shikowska. Did I pronounce that right? Yes. Did I get close, Rosita? Yes. <laughs> okay. And she is one of this year's, the 2022 class of top women in grocery. Uh, she was awarded this distinction in the rising star category. So we're really excited to have you here, Rosita. Talk a little bit about your journey uh, in the industry, your advice for others, kind of what your ma- leadership style and your management style and philosophy are and why you think that works in the industry. So I'm going to do a brief little bio, um, and then we can get right into it. Um, She has been with Albertsons for nearly 13 years, working in grocery operations, customer service, and as a store director. Um, She oversees District 50, which is composed of 22 stores covering four counties over a 50-mile span. Rosita has 132 direct reports, and she also supervises district operational specialists covering floral, deli, bakery, meat, seafood, produce, Starbucks, e-commerce, and front end. So we were really impressed um, uh, with your entry this year and congratulate you on your award. And one of the things that I've been reading these entries for close to 10 years now that always stands out to me are people that start in the industry young and really have a passion for and a commitment to this industry and, and, and move up. And so you know, when you think about your own advancement in the industry, how you got from your first job at Albertsons in it or in the industry to now, um, how did your passion kind of drive you uh, to get where you are? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, th- thanks for the introduction. So, you know, how my passion drove me is really uh, performance, top performance and, um, and the people piece. And I think in the beginning when I was, you know, m- moving up and just learning different roles, especially at store level, it was more, I was more just focusing on my immediate team and just myself and my growth. Um, and just wanting to be, you know, number one in all the metrics, you know, that's what really drove me. And then as I have grown and evolved really from a manager to a leader, um, my, what my passion has really drove the mentorship piece and being able to mentor and coach and guide my teams alongside with, of course, top performance. So when I look at my, my, I've been with the company for 13 years now, it's going to be almost 13 years. It's really evolved just from, hey, I want to do a good job, have good results to, yes, I want that to end. I want to be able to serve my teams and be able to help others be successful. Um, because at the end of the day, like as a leader, it's not just, um, hey, you, you your employees come to work and they go home. It's we impact our team members' entire life. Um, and then when I really got a hold of that, it's like, hey, I can make a difference not only for, uh, for, to my team member at the store or in a district, but I make a difference on their whole life. That's really motivated me on, on helping my team be successful and also uh, with the mentorship piece as well. And when you were starting out, Rosita, who were some mentors to you? Because obviously mentorship is hugely important to you. We've seen you kind of pay that forward in starting mentorship programs, official ones um, kind of in your group. Who was Who were some of your mentors? <laughs> Great question. So one of my mentors, um, her name is Kimberly Beach, and she was my very, very first mentor in life and also at work. Um, I was 20 years old um, when I first got the job with uh, with Safeway, um, and I was just a kid. I was just trying to get by and find my you know path in life, and um, she hired me as a deli clerk. And four months into me working at Safeway as um, at, at the grocery company as a deli clerk, she calls me into her office and she looks at me and she says, you know, Rosita, um, you're getting promoted and you're getting promoted to a deli bakery sushi coffee manager because at this, the store at the time had um, it was it was a smaller store. So the departments were combined. So. So, that was, so so she tells me that I get that I'm, I'm getting this promotion. I can't believe it because I've never been a manager before. I've never led people. I'm barely trying to lead myself, you know, and she really believed in me. And then from that moment on, she became my mentor and my leadership. She became my mentor um, 
on, and on my personal development. She's introduced me to a lot of personal development courses and also helped me um, lead my teams along the way. So she promoted me to this department manager position. Um, a year later, um, she promoted me to a, a perishables manager position, which was pretty much like a second assistant manager. And I've only worked for her for two years. And she ended up moving out of the, out of, um, to another part of California. And after that, I think that's when our, our relationship blossomed even more is because um, I've grown such a great relationship with her because I started seeing her almost like a mother figure and not just she's my boss. Um, so I actually decided to, um, to follow her. So I packed up, I literally packed up my car and asked for and transfer to transfer to another division within our company. I had to go wow. on an interview and yeah, I had to go yeah. go through the process. Um, and then a couple months later, I, I moved to Southern California from Northern California. Um, I was able to be her assistant manager. She was a store manager at the time. And from there, um, she ended up actually retiring. So a few years later, she retired. I didn't work for her much longer, but her mentorship at work, um, it really affected my entire life because now I call her my mom. Like now it's I been it. so many years since, um, since I've worked for her, but I call her all the time and I, and, um, I have a closer relationship with actually with her than my real parents. And that just shows, you know, it's, <laughs> that it's can true. happen at work sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, and it's just, that's the power of mentorship. And because of her, it's like, I understand what one person, what kind of difference they can do on, on one other human being. And Absolutely. so she was my very first mentor, still is to this day, but on a different different light now, not a work mentor, just from a more of a motherly figure. Um, but mm-hmm. she's really taught me the power of mentorship. And, you know, along the way, I've been very, very lucky because I've had mentors all, all along the way when I was a assistant manager, um, when I was a store manager, I've had incredible um, district manager mentors. Um, I have incredible mentors now. Um, so each role that I that I've um, that I've uh, gained or that I've been in, I've been able to have incredible mentors. And now I have a couple and um, I'm just I'm, I'm so blessed. M- mentorship is so important. It's, it's important to be a mentor and it's also important to be a mentee. Well, and especially in the industry with women supporting other women and women, you know, kind of really cheering each other on through formal groups like your, you know, your your inclusion groups and and other more informal ways. Has it come full circle for you? Are there some people that you're mentoring now um, in addition to kind of fostering this program and making that really something of your own? Is it cool when people reach out to you as well? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. And, yeah. The, you know, the, the women's mentorship program that uh, myself and my previous uh, boss, we, we started in, in the district, um, you know, that that was specifically really for women and also for mm-hmm. people of color really started off first as for women. And yes. it was really cool to be able to see, you know, women, wh- whether whether you had a super low entry position, just getting started in the company mm-hmm. um, and saying, hey, like your boss is interested. We want to help you move up or you're already more on a management level where you want to move up. It's great to see um, help uh, women gain confidence and and um, help with the skills and then help prepare for the interviews. You just go through that process and then get promoted and then just keep mm-hmm. growing from there. You know, so it's, yeah. it's great to see getting the calls or the text messages or just just seeing hey announcements that you know these women have been promoted it's it's just it's an incredible part of my job for sure and it's also important we need it in the industry we need more women in leadership roles Mm -hmm. well and I would imagine we talk a lot about the pandemic probably too much sometimes but it probably paid played a huge role in kind of continuing that camaraderie right during that time of during that time of the past couple of years it's been kind of crazy so how did how did mentorship um kind of help that situation as well yeah i th- i think in because covid was it's definitely was interesting it was it was different than what we're used to so one piece of it was just hey i have your back um, if mm-hmm. you need anything, I'm here for you. The mentorship really changed, especially during that peak time of COVID. It changed from, hey, I'm going to come and walk your store with you. And let's talk about your, your you know, your what, what you're working on with, with, with your team and your leadership skills. Mm-hmm. More to the conversations of how can I support you? How can I serve you? And at the same time, being able to walk uh, and talk through the roadblocks of change. Because what's happening mm-hmm. is a lot of people are fear change. And during COVID, there's a lot of change and a lot of uncertainty. 
So, so mentorship was still there, but just the conversation shifted a little bit um, and uh, of what we used to talk about to what we were talking about at that time. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. And in terms of advice that you have, so say there's some like 16 or 17 year old starting as a deli clerk or starting, you know, in the floral department, what advice do you have for her? And you know, it's such an industry where you really can make it a career for such a long time and do so many great things. But if, if you could talk to somebody on their first week, someone that young, a young woman, um, what would you say? You know, that's a, that's a really good question. What, what, what I would say first is even when you, first of all, you, you're not going to know your entire career. You're not going to, you can't predict your future. And for me to ask a 16 year old, Hey, what do you want to do in 10 years from now? Right. They barely know what they want to do, you know, six months from now. Um, and I've seen this cause I have these conversations, but I would say is, um, even when you believe like you can't do it, you still mm-hmm. can still take that action because a lot of times mm-hmm. what's stopping us, especially women, it's that lack of, hey, am I good enough? Am I ready mm-hmm. enough? Do I have the mm-hmm. skills that I need for this next role? Um, yeah. And the truth is, we, we you, you can just go for it. You can do it. So my first advice is even when you don't believe in yourself, you can do it. And then number two is raise your hand and ask to do more. Raise your hand to mm-hmm. um, to help. Don't be afraid to speak up because mm-hmm. what happens is we have so many great team members in our stores and just great great leaders, great women managers in our in our really in our industry, right. um, and only certain ones stand out. Right. Mm-hmm. That really stand out, really that just on a fast track to keep getting promoted. And everyone's looking around and saying, what are they doing? It's, it's raising your hand. Um, that matters like that. because your boss will not mm-hmm. know that you might want that project or you might want to go for that promotion. Mm-hmm. So raising your hand and speaking up for yourself, advocating for yourself. That would be some of the first first advice that, I, that I'd give. And it's really taking advantage. There are so many opportunities to be had. When you raise your hand, you know, you, you, you let them know that you're there for the opportunity as well. A hundred percent. Yeah. And another piece to that is, yeah, you, you raise your hand and performance matters. I always say your performance matters and results matter. So, you know, if you're raising your hand for projects, but your current role, maybe you're struggling in or the results aren't where, um, where, where the expectation is, it's focus on that first, get your results right first. And then you raise your hand for those for those projects, for instance, because results do matter because we're in a we, we're in a business. What do you think a servant leader is? And then the second part of that question is, you know, how do you how do you work towards that? Maybe on a, on a regular basis, maybe even on an everyday basis. Yeah. So, you know, my, my, the, I, I believe that leadership style uh, changes over time. And the way I was, let's say, 10 years ago, I wasn't a leader then. I was a manager. I was like, hey, let's just get it done. Right. We're, we're focusing on getting the job done. Still and then, goal objective, and then, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but when I when I look back now in hindsight, it's that's I was a manager. And then over the years, you you as you do the work, you can b- become a great leader and then continually aspire to be a servant leader. I don't think that mm-hmm. the job's ever done. It's it's continual work it's that constant never-ending improvement so when I think of servant leadership you know usually we're used to thinking that the leaders on top and then you have all the employees on the bottom right and really when I think of servant leadership it's it's that pyramid upside down right where you have your team on top and then you have the leader on the bottom and you're serving your team and when I think of serving my team it doesn't mean that um, I'm letting my team do whatever they want it doesn't mean that you know I'm right. there you know, what, what is it that you need from me it's serving my team by you know giving clear direction setting clear high expectations of goals um constant follow-up constant recognition where it's due constant coaching where it's due as well um but that constant where you give direction and then you step back and you let your team do their job and along the way you recognize where it's needed you coach where it's needed and it's that, that constant relentless um, uh, relentless behavior because, like I said, servant leadership and top performance for me personally, that's what matters. So that's for me what a, what a servant leader is, is someone that shows up for their team, the, the team knows that they can count on you. You're always honest with them, no beating around the bush, but in a right. respectful manner. People appreciate that, right. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And just you know, taking the time. It's and I've had to learn this over the years. It's taking the time to stop and really get to know your team on a personal level as well. Because um, I used to be so focused on getting the results that sometimes, hey, what did you do this weekend? Or hey, how was that wedding? You know, the small minor conversation that really makes a difference. And then that also ties in with mentorship, right? Because if you're taking the time to serve your team, you're also going to see and how you can mentor your team as well and those specific team members in order to be able to serve them. So that's that's how I see it. That's that's my perspective. Well, and you have 100, if you have 132 reports to you, or is that about right? About you have 132 people mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. report into you. And they're all on their own journey and they're all on their own path. And it's, you know, it's a good leader that recognizes that everybody kind of is in their own way. And it could be something like, what'd you do over the weekend that could spark a conversation that could, could spark something else? 100%. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then how do you describe your passion for the industry when you got into this industry? You know, how did you feel about, you know, grocery and retail, food, food retailing? And then how would you describe how that's evolved too? that just, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of your interest um, and your love for the industry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, So in the beginning, um, I mean, the industry has been very good to me, first and foremost, and and, and same with, with the company I've worked for. And there is a lot of when I describe our industry, I describe it as it's very fast. And there's also lots of opportunities for growth, right? So you can go into so many companies, you can start on the bottom or you can start at a certain level and you can continue to move up if that's what you choose to do. And that's if that's if if, if that's if that's what you want to do, those are your goals. So definitely opportunity for advancement. And it's also very fast. And I love that it's constant change. And yeah. now, you know, over the years, what, what I've noticed and even re- is most recently is we're even involving so much with technology. And now it's we have to keep up with the e-commerce and the multi-fulfillment centers and all the and the third party vendors like Instacart and DoorDash. So there's a lot more technology involved now in the industry. And I think it's very important, especially as leaders, to um, to be to be open to that, to be receptive and also to get your team on board as well, because you know we're constantly companies are constantly re- rolling out different dif- different productivity systems, dif- different ways to be more efficient. It's all around technology, and same with e-commerce, right? It's all technology based, and we have to be able to get our teams buy-in in order to have great results. So I think for sure advancement, fast moving, and now it's really involving with technology. It is. And a lot of the, the people, those young people that we talk about coming in now, they're going to be, it's going to be native to them. Technology is going to be kind of expected and native to them. So it's, you know, everybody's got to, you know, got to get get their mind around that mindset because that's where, that's where their futures are kind of going in that direction as well. But always with the personal touch with the, with the, with the servant leadership and the mentorship. Is there anything new um, that, you're, that you're working on right now that you're particularly proud of, Rosita, that uh, we might be looking at next year when we're reviewing <laughs> entries again? Um, you know, so I am working. Um, I am working on a special project uh, with mm-hmm. a metaverse initiative. Um, okay. So that's something that that I'm working on. Um, that's ambitious. Yeah. 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 And then just you know, I'm I'm just very very proud of my uh, my teams with the e-commerce perspective. Um, there's more and more stores are constantly, and this is just within the industry, right? More and more stores are, are having the drive up and goes and flash deliveries and, um, and, um, home deliveries and so forth. So I'm just proud of my teams, uh, for being able to, um, keep, keep the pace and also at the same time have, have great, have great results. So that, that's something that I'm really proud of right now is the, the adaptation of the technology. Well, and you have to be nimble. I mean, you have to be. That's one thing that we've we've learned over these past couple of years. We really have to be versatile and, and be nimble and uh, as we go with our with our teams as well. Um, and finally, are you involved in the community in other ways too, Rosita? There's is there other ways, you know, in addition to the workplace that you can work with on, on a community level with different groups or individuals? Do you have any passions in that area as well? Yeah, so actually, um, I I stopped this past year um, when I attended the USC program, and I've I've gotten actually back to school um, Mm -hmm. to get my uh, bachelor's degree and then planning on my master's. So that's That's been taking up a lot of, yeah, that's been taking up a lot of my personal time. time. Definitely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but one, one thing that I've been involved over the years is um, actually creating 
online mentorship programs and helping women with job promotions. Um, so I've actually created some trainings in the past and um, um, uh, shared them through sales webinars that I've created. So I've also um, really, really enjoy trying out uh, uh, creating online businesses that just kind of became my hobby a couple of years back. That's and cool. I just really enjoy doing these entrepreneurial projects. Um, so that's something that I was heavily involved in with, is with helping women with job promotions and the mentorship piece, which has been on pause for now. Um, but that's, yeah, that's something that's near and dear to my heart for sure. And you, I think you were recognized from your uh, chief human resources officer for some of your work in this area, or is it in another area, Rosita? Um, so I did receive a star award, if that's yeah. what you're referring to. It is. Yeah, I remember so it stood out in the entry to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I did receive a um, star award uh, from um, our chief human officer. Yes. Um, and this was really for execution around um, a... Uh, event, uh, liquor, uh, selling liquor, uh, sell, selling uh, alcohol for certain um, timelines for certain events. My team, it's really not my award, it's my team's award, executed okay. so well where we've just continually finished on top of the division in, in our sales. Um, so that's, so that's what that was for is for the, for the execution in the, um, in the uh, liquor event. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you did yeah. lift your, you lifted your groups and you lifted your division in quite a lot of areas, didn't you? That was another thing we noticed in your entry this year. And, you know, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's, so. it's for sure. It's a, it's a team effort, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it, goes, it, it goes back to that servant leadership. You give your team the, the direction and a clear plan and that consistent follow up. Um, and then, and they, they make it happen. And I can bet that on any team out there. If you do that with your team um, and give that recognition, give that coaching words, do and really show up every day, relentless, uh, every day, 100%, any team can can really make that happen. I truly believe that. And recognition is so important. And I know, um, you know, I, sometimes things that can't be overstated how important recognition is. Even something so small on a daily basis can make a difference in someone's productivity and their attitude towards what they're doing. And ultimately, you know, the way the business is run and the way customers are satisfied. Um, I, yeah, I, I think with recognition, it's important to be intentional and just what I like to do is literally on a ye yellow notepad, just write down what, when I, as I visit stores, is just write down like, hey, what is this team? What are they performing really well in our certain employees? And then as you visit, a, as I visit the stores, I can give them a, a recognition card or, or just verbal recognition, but just being intentional with it because it's, we get so busy, right? It's so easy to get, to get stuck in that everyday work. So recognition for sure, it's just being intentional with it. Um, it's, it's important and authentic because if you're bringing that piece yeah. of paper with you, it's authentic as it's something you're noticing and it's something that stood out to you for sure. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Appreciate you joining us today uh, for our top women in grocery podcast, Rosita. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And then I hope we're going to see you in, uh, see you in November uh, during grocery week and the top women in grocery gala and awards and everything else. So I really hope to see you in person at some point then. Yes, for sure. I already booked my hotel, actually, so I'm looking there forward go. to it. <laughs> there, we, there we go. Well, yeah. thank you again for joining us and thank the audience for joining us as well. Uh, for more information on the Top Women in Grocery podcast, visit ProgressiveGrocer.com slash podcast. You can also subscribe to the series whenever you typically listen to podcasts, including on Apple, Google, and Spotify. Stay tuned for other exciting topics, uh, including how to thrive in a multi-generational workforce. And if you have an idea for a Twig podcast, we want to hear from you. So email me at lptrack at ensemble.com if you'd like. And again, on behalf of Progressive Grocer, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Have a great week, everybody.